In the next two chapters, we will have look on technical demo of scene nodes from new cinema for the R23 release. Scene nodes have a huge potential, and in next couple of months, Maxim will continue to work on scene nodes integration, workflow, and many other improvements. They will also include many more nodes than are available now. So as first step, I will show you basics to better understand how scene nodes work. When Maxim will be ready to release improved version of scene nodes, we will create entire new course for beginners and intermediate level users, where we will explain all details and potential of scene nodes. The easiest way how to activate C nodes is to use nodes layout. In this layout, we can see how looks scene result. Next is parameters field where we can control nodes parameters. And also we will use material section. In the largest area of this template, we will work with C nodes. As first step, we have to click on C nodes icon which will activate CNode Editor. And as you can see, now we have access to CNode Editor. On left side of CNode Editor, you can find all nodes organized by categories. And on the right side of CNode Editor, you can find Scene Output. Geometry operators connected into the Scene Output we will see in 3D viewport. As you can see, even this is just technical demo. There are already available many categories and nodes. I would like to be sure that in this introduction chapter will be everything as clean as possible. So on the beginning, we will use only few categories, which are the most important for understanding how C Node Editor works. I will start with geometry category. As you can see on left side of nodes are color lines, which are supposed to help you easier identify purpose of chosen node. As example, capsule is primitive and has blue color exactly as have primitives in main UI. If I will go now to effectors category, where you can find familiar modifiers names, again as you can see all these effectors contains the same color as modifiers in the main UI. If I will go to the fields category again, all fields contains the same color as fields in the main UI. So as you can see, these colors are actually very helpful. There are some exceptions and good example is generator section. There are also nodes which works as assets. Assets usually contains many nodes from different categories, which are grouped together. So remember that color lines in generator section very often represent mixed categories. As next step, I will go back into the geometry section. And as example, I will use capsule node. If you would like to use chosen node, drag and drop this node into the scene nodes field. It's similar workflow as using Material Editor or Shader Graph. Capsule node represents capsule geometry. Parameters of selected node I can change in parameter section. If I would like to see in 3D viewport how looks my current result, I have to connect nodes into the scene output. But as you can see, I am not able to connect simple geometry into the scene output so I'm not able to see current result in 3D viewport now. Reason is simple. Into the scene output belongs operators node from operators category. So as next step, I will go into the operators category and here I will choose primitive op node. As you can see, this node is much more complex and compared to geometry capsule node contains also many inputs and also op output. Op means operator. In parameter section, I can again see many more options than before, because operators nodes works as entire tools, which contains package of primitives or fields or modifiers, 
include operations which we need to process if we would like to see correct result in 3D viewport. So if I would like to use the minimum nodes and have interesting looking result, easiest way is to use mostly operator nodes. As next step, I will choose capsule and I am using the same default parameter like in geometry node before. As next step, I will connect up output into the scene and this time I can immediately see result in 3D viewport. So if I am working with operator nodes, I'm able to preview result from these nodes in 3D viewport. In case that I'm working with simple geometry node instead, I have to use one more node which will be able to create operator from geometry. In operator section, we can find geometry operator node. As you can see, it's simple node, but I am using this node very often because it's able to create operator from any geometry node. If you are not sure where to connect output from nodes, as you can see, Maxon named inputs and outputs, so it's much easier to identify connections between nodes. So I will connect geometry output into the geometry input and operator output into the scene. And as you can see now, everything works properly and we are able to see exactly the same result. But instead of using one primitive operator node, we created the same result from two separate nodes. So if you are a beginner and node's workflow is confusing for you, don't try immediately difficult operations or connections and use operator's nodes only. But in the moment when you are more and more familiar with this workflow, you will have opportunity to create your own assets or you can create from all available nodes procedural results which were not possible before. Another very helpful feature is asset search. As example, if I would like to work with capsule and I will write to search field capsule, as you can see, it will show me categories and node names which contains capsule. So I can easily choose now, I would like to use primitive operator to create capsule object or I would like to use capsule as plain geometry only. As next step, I will show you a few simple examples how to use nodes. And I will start with geometry based nodes so I will make little bit space. As example, I will use extrude node, but you can use also bevel, inset, subdivide or any other geometry node. And because extrude belongs into the geometry edit category, all these nodes belongs between object and operator node. So as next step, I will connect geometry output from capsule into the geometry input of extrude node and geometry output from extrude node into the geometry input of geometry up node. So actually, as you can see, it's very easy to figure out where to connect it because port's naming is consistent. And in 3D viewport, we can see now how looks result after extrude. It's simple as that. If I would like to change nodes parameters, I just have to select node and now I have access to all his parameters. Now I am able to change offset or add variations. So actually I can change any available parameter as I need. And in mode field, I can choose what will be affected such as geometry, edges, points or polygons. In the next example, I will show you how to use operator nodes. I explained already how works primitive operator. So I will connect this node directly into the scene. As next step, I will go into the operators category. Here you can find operators such as distribution, which using similar workflow like cloner, or operators for blend color, or material operator, which I will need if I would like to apply material, and many more operators. 
As example, I will use a vector operator because I would like to deform capsule object. If I am using nodes, I have many options of how to connect them and it's important to choose proper nodes order. So if I know that I would like to deform primitive, I have to connect the form effector after primitive. Always think about the purpose of the chosen node and you will easily figure out where and how to correctly connect nodes together. And because I am using a vector operator, and we know already that operators contains more options, again I can choose which effector type I would like to use. For this example, I will use bend effector. Will this bend effector work the same way as bend modifier? We will find out soon. I will connect operator output from capsule into the up input of bend effector. Again, naming help us to identify correct ports. And as next step, I will connect op output from bend effector into the scene. As next step, I have to increase bend strength and I have to choose proper transform mode. If I will increase or decrease strength parameter without proper transform mode, as you can see in 3D viewport, I am not able to see any result. By default is effector transform mode distribution. But if I will switch from distribution to mesh, immediately I will have correct result and as you can see now, bend effector node works as standard bend deformer. So now I can control blend strength exactly as I need. And of course, now I can combine this effector node with nodes from previous example as well. I just need to connect geometry up output with effector up input because these are only compatible ports in this example. And as you can see in 3D viewport, all works properly. So again, I can change bend strength exactly as I need. In effector metric section, I have control over bend position, scale and rotation, separately for X, Y and Z axis. Sometimes can happen that naming such as metrics looks confusing. Even in wide context it has perfect sense. That's reason why we will explain in our C notes course all important nodes, their functionality and naming as well. But for now I will show you useful trick how to find correct nodes. If I will write into the asset search operation which I would like to do, so as example I will write transform, as you can see filtering system showing me separately by categories all nodes which contains transform. And because I would like to use operator, in operator section I can see only two options, distribution which works similar like cloner or matrix op which I can use if I would like to change position, scale or rotation. So I will drag and drop matrix of node into the node editor and I will connect capsule operator output into the matrix operator input. And as next step I will connect matrix output into the scene. I will make little bit more space and as next step I will select matrix up node. Now I have access into the matrix parameters. And as you can see matrix in C nodes workflow allows me to change position, scale or rotation. Important is to understand that node system is fully procedural. So currently you cannot move or scale object manually in 3D viewport. And that's the reason why even position, scale or rotation has to be processed by node. In this case, matrix node. In this example, I will use again primitive operator. And this time I would like to combine operator node with geometry node. So as example, I will use bevel. 
Again, I can see yellowish brown color, which is indicated me what kind of node it is. If I would like to connect operator output into the geometry input, as you can see, I'm not allowed to do so. So in this case, as first step, I have to click on up output triangle sign and I will have access to all output ports. As you can see, primitive operator node contains geometry output as well. So now I am able to connect this geometry output with bevel geometry input. But in this case, we know already that only operator level output is visible in the 3D viewport. So if I would like to see my result now, I cannot connect bevel output into the scene. So again, as I explained before, we will use geometry operator node. It's simple as that. I will connect bevel geometry output with geometry input of geometry operator node. And now I can connect operator output with the scene. As you can see in 3D viewport, all works correctly. So I can choose now type of primitive or I can select bevel node and work with his parameters. Don't forget that bevel result depends on amount of primitive segments or in case if you are using imported objects on amount of polygons. In this example, I will show you how to connect together two or more objects in the same scene. I will use two primitive up nodes and I will choose different primitive type in second node for better visibility and separation. As next step, I can connect oil tank into the scene output or I can connect cube instead. But in the case that I would like to see both in 3D viewport, I have to use one more node. In operators category, you can find children up node. Children up node allows you to connect two or even more objects together. Depends on amount of children up inputs, which you can increase or decrease in parameter section. So as next step, I will connect cube operator output with main operator input of children up node. And also I will connect oil tank up output with children one input of children up node. As next step, I will connect children up output into the scene. Now scene contains both objects, but because they have the same position and cube is larger than oil tank, you are not able to see them both in 3D viewport yet. So as next step, I will increase oil tank radius. And now we are able to see both objects in the same scene. And if I will use matrix operator, I will be also able to change objects position. If I will use matrix operator for object which is connected into the main op input, as you can see, I will move with all connected objects together. But in case that I will use matrix op node for objects connected into the children input, I will be able to control position, scale or rotation of these objects separately. I think it's time to finish first part of these C nodes chapters because I don't want to overload you with too many informations. And in the next chapter, we will have a look on how to create with CNOS clones, colors, random selections, fields, or how to use redshift materials.